The Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor 71 years ago remains a tragic part of our nation's history. Sadly, our national memory has a tendency to fade with time. But survivors of the attack remind Americans that lack of vigilance has a high cost. 94-year-old Arizona resident Paul Goodyear was a signalman aboard the USS Oklahoma on December 7, 1941. He was recently interviewed by Jeff Fister, an Arizona biographer and author whose book Battleship Oklahoma was co-authored by Goodyear we were and Thomas there Holmes. On the starboard wing, we saw all oh, five, six, eight planes. I don't remember in a line, just going about a mile across the bow ahead of us, and they were pretty far off on our starboard bow when we first uh, uh, spotted them. And as they got almost dead ahead of us, the first plane dropped a bomb. That didn't bother us because we were right alongside Ford Island, and Ford, Ford Island had the Naval Air Station on it. Goodyear says American pilots would practice bombing runs in that same area using sand and water bombs. Then a bomb hit the seaplane hangar on Ford Island, causing a huge explosion. Goodyear and Stryker Red Latrell knew then it was no drill and that the Oklahoma would be next. So I looked over my left shoulder and I says to Red, hang on, here comes a fish, because I could look right down through 1010, a long 1010 dock and I saw these torpedo planes approaching. There was nothing they could do because the ship was prepared for an inspection and all ammunition was stowed away from the guns when the Japanese attacked. And we just stood there while two or three or four torpedoes hit us. Chaos ensued as the crew raced to battle stations. All of a sudden, our 36-inch telescope, which was on a round base and just stood up there on a bracket, started sliding along. It was The ship was going over that far. So I said, let's get the devil out of here. So The Oklahoma moored outboard of the USS Maryland took multiple torpedoes. It began to roll over and capsize. As Goodyear made his way down from the signal tower to abandon ship, he stopped long enough to see the bomb that destroyed the USS Arizona. And, and as I just sat there on the th bridge, I saw the first plane drop a bomb and I followed it right down. And I went in just after uh, turret number two. Goodyear did not wait to see the massive explosion that broke the Arizona's back. He was busy trying to find a place to jump into the water to swim to the USS Maryland. And, but I got down off the boat deck and got down on the main deck and climbed over. By this time, the ship is pretty well over. The uh, uh, Like laying on its side? No, it was getting there. Okay. Probably about that time, the... Uh, quarter deck was just going under water. Time was of the essence. The ship was still rolling and I was up here about 50 feet and I knew that pretty soon as the ship kept going there wouldn't be any place for me to land down there. So I just stepped off and dropped into the water. Goodyear swam to the Maryland doing his best to avoid oil and debris. I just put both hands, both arms on the uh, torpedo blister of the Maryland and some kid up above threw me a monkey's fist and I just reached up with my right hand and grabbed a hold of it and by just snapping my arm like that the monkey's fist just wrapped around my arm and I was securely fastened in there so he pulled me up and as he's pulling me up I'm looking and right here between my head in my hand, there's spots coming on the Maryland. Paint chipped off. What the hell are those? Oh my God, that's bullets. Later he realized how close he had been to death. But if he'd have just lowered his angle of fire a half a degree, that would have gone right through my head. It would have been all over. In Battleship Oklahoma, Fister details the rescue effort to save the men trapped in the capsized ship. 32 men were cut out of the ship, but 429 died. 
when you were on the signal tower on Ford Island and you could still hear the pounding of crew members who were stuck inside, trapped inside the Oklahoma, um, how did that feel? What were your thoughts? Well, it just tore the hell out of you because you knew that there was no way in hell those kids were going to get out of there. That scene still haunts him. Oh, it still bugs the hell out of me that uh, too many nights I lay there and think of that. What, what, what must be going through your head when you know that every breath you take is just shortening your own life and there's no chance of anybody ever getting to you? And it, it was pitch black down there. And talking with kids that did get out, you know it was noisy down there. Kids were yelling, screaming, crying, praying. It must have been absolute hell. In 1943, a salvage effort refloated the Oklahoma, and Goodyear had an opportunity to go back aboard ship to search for his possessions. I just went down through the armored deck and uh, got down on the same deck as uh, our bunks were on, and I just put my right foot over the hatch and as I did I was carrying the torch in my right hand and it just swept across the floor and the deck was just literally covered with bones just just bones nothing else no you couldn't recognize anything the bones were buried in a mass grave in a military cemetery on Oahu. But for many years, Goodyear and others have led an effort to identify the remains and have them returned to their families. The effort is ongoing. The USS Oklahoma was too badly damaged to repair. It was stripped of its armaments and sold for scrap, but broke apart as it was being towed to Washington State. It now lays at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. Today, however, a memorial on Ford Island recognizes the officers and the crew who served on the USS Oklahoma on December 7, 1941.